Israel. Our party's platform has some very strong measures on the environment, uh, on climate change. It's about collaboration and working uh, with people. Mr. Trudeau is a very collaborative leader. Um, it's about getting the economy going again. Um, well, it create, I'll tell you one that is at, at odds with some of the um, wealthier constituents in Vancouver Padra, because we do have a lot of wealthy families here. Not the majority, but we have some. And our platform will put a new tax on people who earn $200,000 a year or more. And those funds will be used to reduce the middle income tax bracket uh, tax rate, so that in, from the middle income tax bracket, you will you will have $700 uh, dollars less to pay in income tax. So I think that that may be a box with wealthier families. We also won't send checks to millionaires that have children. And that, unlike the NDP's platform, who have signed on to some of this framework of the Conservatives, uh, we will not have child tax benefits to the wealthiest families. They will be phased out, and so that we can have more generous checks for families with children to middle and lower income families. In fact, our child tax benefit program would take 315,000 children up above the poverty line, and we're very proud of that very progressive aspect to our platform. But some of the wealthiest may not like it. Um, so the question is around needs of this riding, and I think this is where the Green Party is uh, really strong. So I talked a bit about at the beginning how the only job of a member of parliament is to represent you. So I'm literally the only major party candidate here who's actually allowed to represent you. Uh, one of the stories I like to tell is when any of these other three parties sit in parliament uh, to vote in the House of Commons, they're given a sheet of paper with stickers on it, and it tells them how to vote that day on every single bill in the House. This applies to the NDP, the Liberal, and the Conservatives. So the Green candidates don't have this. And I remember when one of the first pages went up to Elizabeth May and said, I can't find your sheet. How are you going to know how to vote? And Elizabeth May responded and said, well, in the Green Party, we actually read the legislation and talk to our constituents about it. So that's a notable difference that we've never seen. And that's what got me excited to run in the Green Party. Is I can honestly say it. My only goal is to represent you, the constituents of Vancouver Quadra. And I think that's really exciting for this area. I think, well, one of the pieces of the NDP's platform that will run uh, contrary to the interests of Bank of is cancelling income splitting. Uh, so I've knocked on a couple doors and some folks have asked about that. I've reassured a lot of people that we're not um, going to cancel seniors income splitting as we want to make sure that uh, our seniors are well taken care of. The CEO stock option tax loopholes, there are some CEOs uh, that do live in the riding and so they will not be able to uh, be as tax exempt as they once were. Uh, but actually, uh, Vancouver Quadra is, a, in a lot of ways, it, was, uh, it is one of the most wealthy ridings in the country. Uh, it's one of the more well-educated ridings in the country. But that doesn't mean that the lived reality of poverty aren't an issue in this riding. Uh, I've learned that firsthand and met individuals that are really struggling. So uh, a lot of the payments that we're going to make into cooperative housing, uh, there's a, a halfway house actually on Dunbar Street. So our plan to address mental health uh, and be a positive role in people's lives will resonate, I think, to a surprising degree in this riding. I think it's very important. So I'm going to be a populist on this one. It's basically what Joyce said. We're a very wealthy riding here. The tax, the incomes go from, you know, my kind of grad student salary all the way up to millions of dollars of salary. The tax brackets, though, end below $200,000. And I applaud the Liberals' plan to add a new tax bracket. But here's the thing. This is my physicist colors are going to show through here. If you make a graph of the tax brackets, it's pretty obvious that they should asymptote to 100% at infinite income. So why don't we just actually have 
lots of tax brackets that keep going and keep going and keep going, your last dollar that you make, your infinitieth dollar, in theory, should be taxed 100%. That's kind of a, a first principle that almost anybody could agree with. Why should the, what, okay, if they end at 140 and it's ethical and just to add a new bracket that goes up to, 100, to 200, why not another one that goes up to 300, another one that goes up to 500? This, is a, this only makes sense. Let's extend the system that's currently very truncated and make it rational. Um, that would actually hurt a lot of people in this writing. I, I'm sorry about that, but it would, it just makes a lot of sense. Thank you. I think we're going to make this next question the last question for the evening. It's another one from Twitter. Talking about greenhouse gas emissions targets is like talking about weight loss goals. How do we know that your platform is achievable and realistic goals? Um, so I think addressing climate change and environment as I sit here representing the Green Party is uh, a pretty easy win. Uh, anybody can go in and look at our platform. It's been online again first over any other party. It's why the Green Party exists. So uh, to say that we care about the environment and resolving climate change is an under, uh, understatement. Um, I look forward to uh, going to Paris this fall if given the opportunity. It's the Global Climate Change Conference. And so how we vote and how we're represented there on the international stage I think is very important. And so we need to think about that, including with our vote, because um, this could either be a, a situation where Canada comes out as a world leader, or we could be in the situation that the Harper Conservatives got us in on the international stage. Yeah, I, I really like that uh, analogy between greenhouse gas emission goals and uh, weight loss. And so, um, the NDP, we're committed to firm emissions targets, and um, we have committed these targets. Uh, the Green Party has good targets. The Conservative Party has targets. They're, um, <laughs> they might be kind of like losing three pounds in the next six years or something like that. It's not very uh, audacious, the Rob Ford weight loss plan or something like that. Um, and the Liberal Party, though, has not uh, come forward with uh, greenhouse gas emissions targets. So we have committed to these targets and our plan to get there is a national cap and trade strategy. And so that means we set firm reductions targets that I outlined in my opening remarks, which is a 34% reduction below 1990 levels by 2025. And with a national cap and trade plan, we can set a cap. And now this is not to say we're going to... Um,